this is Colin Hendra from Witch Hazel, and you are listening to the Wild Man and Steve Show. You are about to listen to the intersection of faith, talk, and music. The Wild Man and Steve Show starts right now. So, Steve, I want to welcome you once again to our show. We talked before about that. We were going to just change the name, making it our show, because it's nobody else's show. It's it's our show. And, and you know, I, I like being welcomed to our show. It, it feels good. Thank you. It does. Yeah. I mean, it gives you a sense of ownership, gives you a sense of pride. It gives you a sense of, uh, of what middle-aged guys like to do to keep from going through a crisis. You, you got that right, baby. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, ladies and gentlemen, as you know, this is the time of the show where I turn it over to Steve, Mr. Segway, the Latin teacher, rock and metal enthusiast, whom Brian Duncan said is quite the incongruity. Uh, Mr. Segway always has something up his sleeve to introduce these amazing guests we have on the show. And by the way, we have an amazing guest on the show tonight. So, Steve, take it away, Mr. Segway. You know, I, it's interesting, you, you were talking about middle-aged men staying out of trouble, and for, for me, and I, and I think for you, and I'm sure for a lot of our listeners, uh, it is really just hard, driving rock. I mean, I, I, I want rock that is so, just, it, it's, like a, it's like a gale force wind, you know what I'm saying? It's, just like, it's like just boom, it's just like gale force winds, just streaming out of the speaker just blowing my non-existent <laughs> hair back that's that's what i'm looking for non-existent so, uh, non-existent hair right non-existent no, hair. Me, i used to have it i used to have it and it's it's long gone. <laughs> <laughs> well you know it's amazing you know ladies and gentlemen it is so amazing how mr segway comes up with these because would you believe steve believe it or not we have the lead singer front man of the new band gale force with us tonight no, are you serious? Yes, I am serious. That's amazing. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to welcome to the show Michael Drive. Michael, how are you doing? And welcome, sir. Thank you very much. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Oh, it, it is an honor to have you, sir. And uh, I, I, for one, has, have been a fan of yours for a very long time, pretty much from the beginning, going all the way back to Rock for the King, um, going back to that, and uh, was able to see you in concert. And so when I heard you had a new band coming out, I, I was very excited about it. So we're going to be getting into your new work and what you're doing. Um, and I uh, just wanted to, you know, we usually start off just by asking, our listeners are always interested in, um, what was it that got you started in music and singing in the first place? Well, you know, I, I, I was very uh, moved by the British progressive rock band uh, era in the 70s, actually. Um, well, of course, this, I, was, I was still very young in the 70s, but, but I liked the music of the 70s and uh, especially the progressive rock bands. Uh, which really defined my my influences uh, later on. Uh, for me, uh, it were bands like uh, King Crimson and Yes, uh, Early Genesis, UK, ELP, uh, and a few non-British progressive rock bands like Rush and Kansas. Uh, and those kind of bands really uh, set a fire under me and ignited something that began very early on. Wow, wow, that's great. The 
<laughs> Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you already started it off. You talked frog rock. And uh, one of our fans, one of our good friends, um, well, actually a couple of our very good friends, uh, uh, Mark Middleberg and Paul Berdakis, are huge frog rock fans, especially Kansas. I know those guys are just crazy for Kansas. Talk to us, actually talk to our listeners who may not understand what that term means. What does prog rock mean to you, both from that 70s era and even what does that mean today? Well, uh, I would say progressive rock, as it was performed by a lot of those bands that I mentioned in the 70s, uh, was probably very much a departure from, if you will, radio-friendly uh, three minute, 30 second songs, uh, that had verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus out kind of thing. And, uh, you know, it, it had odd, uh, odd time signatures, uh, that sometimes would change in the course of the song throughout the course of the song. Uh, there really was no set kind of standard, um, with, with, the, with the music. And it was pretty much kind of like a, uh, a story, a musical story, if you will, uh, from song to song, and um, and I, I especially, I especially really liked that song, the changes, and 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 how uh, you know, one song that I wrote, uh, which appeared on the Baron Cross State of Control album, uh, which really defines, which really uh, was um, brought the influence back from those early days, was two thousand years. Uh, uh, has all those different sections in that song, and uh, and that really was my Kansas uh, influences coming out in the songs. If, if you listen to some of Kansas, I mean, you know, they have some commercial stuff too, like uh, um, uh, Dust in the Wind and Carry On My Wayward Son and this and that, uh, but uh, they really had some other stuff that was really out there. And uh, so I, I would I would say that was that's that's a good definition of progressive rock. It's just a departure of the standard. Well, this this one friend that I mentioned, uh, Mark Middleberg, he's he's joked before uh, that heavy metal fans, when they grow up, become prog rock fans. And and, and you think about this, there's there's <laughs> certainly a connection. And you, know, you think about some of those bands that you named. Uh, I would throw in Deep Purple as well from that era. From my perspective, I think as a listener, and I'm curious what your perspective is as as a musician. It feels to me that there's a lot more creativity uh, and really a lot more musicality in some of that sort of material. Uh, and really it requires a lot more from, from the musicians and the artists. Am I correct in that? Well, yeah, it's, it's not, not everybody can, can do that kind of thing. It's, 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 uh, it is complicated. You know, there are moments in, in the songs from those groups that have beautiful melodies and and their simplistic sections, and then five minutes or uh, a minute later, it goes into something very complicated. And so that's just the way it is. And so uh, you you got to be a really good musician, I think, um, to perform that kind of thing. And and so I, I I'm glad that I was into that. It it really uh, it honed me as a musician, I believe. You know, you know, Michael. Um, I remember um, way back when, and listening to Baron Cross, and in comparison to everybody else, I was listening to. I just remember how it just stuck out, and what really stuck out in my mind was the uniqueness of your vocals. Your vocals are great, tremendous um, vocals with great versatility. You can do a ballad. You can do something close to speed metal. Um, but uh, you know, in, in saying that, with the uniqueness. Um, it kind of stands out. Was there anybody that was kind of your idol you were trying to sing with when you were growing up or when you got into music or, or did you just develop your own sound and just go with it on your own? Well, you know, some people would say, and I did get this a lot that, that I sound a bit or did back then a bit like Bruce Dickinson uh, from Iron Maiden. But uh, I think that's mainly because of the tonality of my voice is approximately the same as his. Uh, the uh, um, w when I when I sing in the upper registers, I, I, I tend to have a little bit of sometimes the same uh, tonality there. Although, although that's not so much more the case uh, today. I think that I've really gotten much more into my own vocal sound, uh, and I'm much less like Bruce Jenkinson today. 
And so, uh, but more to answer your question is, is uh, I think the music in general uh, was what um, was really what was directing me uh, as well as my, my faith in God too. listen to the Gail Force album, um, you know, it's just, it, it's inspiring in the sense of just hearing your passion as you sing. You, you can you, you can tell you have a passion for the song and the songs that you're singing and the album and, and you behind it and doing the writing <clears throat> of the songs. Um, what was it that, I, I mean, we, you, we have a whole thing to get in here about how Gale Force started and everything. Um, but just b before we get specifically to the band members, which we will get there, um, what was it that caused you to think that, you know, now's the time for an album like this? That's a good question. I, I have, uh, <clears throat> I've been working hard uh, on engineering an album for some years now uh, with another recording artist. I'm not at liberty to say who that is, but that's been a very important uh, thing that I've been doing. But it's just kind of something that God said, okay, now, now, you know, do it. And, uh, uh, and, and I just, I'm just grateful. I'm, I'm grateful. I, I try to let God lead me as much as possible. And, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've surrendered myself completely over to him anyway. And so I'm really grateful for what, uh, what God allows, but, um, yeah, it just was the right time. It's really hard to explain. It's just the time, you know? Well, I, I've got to ask the question to a vocalist, and I love asking this question. I mean, I, as a kid, I grew up singing, singing in choirs and so forth. Um, and as a teacher, I'm always using my, so I'm curious, how have you maintained your voice? You talked about how it's changed uh, somewhat over time and, and kind of coming into your own uh, sense and space of that now, but how have you maintained it? over the years of recording and touring and, and using it really in a way that obviously most people do not, how have you maintained it and kept it strong and healthy? Well, for one thing, I don't destroy it with cocaine. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, snort or shoot or, uh, you know, smoke a bunch of junk and, and get wasted and, and, you know, drink a lot. I don't do all of that stuff. Um, because it just messes you up. Anything you want to do in life that's quality, if you want it to be quality, drugs is not a part of it. And so, uh, and plus it destroys people's lives anyway. So I don't do that. I, I uh, try to get a lot of sleep, uh, eat right. I eat a lot of organic foods. Um, I drink a lot of water. That's very important if you're a singer. Uh, you drink a lot of water. And, uh, you know, you just, you try to live in the right way. You get plenty of sleep. You eat right. You drink a lot of water. You don't do drugs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and then of course, um, uh, it's it's God who gave me the vocal cords that I have, and so I'm really grateful to Him that uh, that He's allowed me to sing um, better now than ever before, even so. <laughs> Yeah. 
So, uh, Gale Force, tell us how this how this project um, happened, how it began, um, how the members joined, how you guys met. You know, it's always cur- I'm always curious about this at times because you know sometimes in my in our in a fan's mind they put things together that and they just kind of. Uh, uh, put things together that maybe aren't the case, you know, and there's been some times where I, I've like, well, they just met when they knew each other growing up, you know, something like that. So give us a little background of Gale Force. Well, um, I have, I've had an internet presence and Paul Alfrey, the gu- rhythm guitar player uh, contacted me and he was already uh, uh, putting songs together with Tracy G from, uh, who's a guitar player from Dio uh, and uh, they were already also with uh, Randy Oviedo, the, our bass player. And so they contacted me and uh, asked me if I would be interested. I listened to some of their songs, and uh, I was all I was right away taken emotionally by them. Uh, I really enjoyed what I heard. The very first song that I heard from them was what ended up being Crash and Burn. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, I thought, wow, this is really cool, you know, so... So I was right away um, inspired uh, to compose the melody lines and the lyrics uh, to my vocals. And then I, I recorded all those in my studio, uh, brought the, the song back to them. Uh, they, they loved it. Uh, they thought it was great. And uh, so we, we then decided to have a meeting and we met at uh, a restaurant here in Los Angeles uh, and uh, talked about everything and officially formed as a band. And actually, Crash and Burn, we had already recorded it, and uh, and it was it was done. It was the first song that was already done before we were even a band officially. So, oh, that's a bit yeah. it. Oh, that's cool. And then it took us about, I, I would say, about a year and a half later. Uh, we we did song by song by song, uh, and uh, you know, not cutting any corners, uh, just really, uh, you know, taking every specific song and saying, okay, what's the best thing for that song and just really doing it like that. And so uh, when we were finished with that song, we would move on to the next one and so on and so forth. And so it took us about a year and a half uh, and we have a, we have an album that we're really proud of, so. Now, are you guys all based in LA? Yes, we are. Cool, cool. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned uh, just kind of connecting with, uh, with Dio. Uh, and I think about, you know, what an incredible vocal uh, Ronnie James Dio had. Um, everybody has, has just loved uh, that sound. Uh, so obviously you got guys coming together from kind of some different backgrounds and so forth. How do you explain that meshing of, of, of artists coming from different bands, different sounds and so forth? And then you guys sitting around the table and going, wow, this this really works. This is this is really good. You know, you you've referenced your faith in God. Is is that what you think this is? It's, it's bringing all this together. That it's divinely inspired. Oh yeah, absolutely. There's there's no doubt about it for me. Uh, as I told you earlier, I, I I I totally have surrendered who I am to God, and so I let Him control. I let Him take care of it. You know, uh, I've made enough uh, uh, bad decisions in my life. Uh, to know that I don't run the show very well when I do everything my own way. So I'd rather do it God's way and it always works out the, the best way it's supposed to be. That doesn't mean life is going to be a bowl of cherries, but uh, I'm, I'm, you know, that, that does mean that I get to have a lot of peace and a lot of joy and uh, really fulfillment uh, in, in what God brings along. So, and here he really, uh, you know, gave me some powerful musicians um, Paul Alfrey is very talented at uh, producing and rhythm guitar playing um, and is a great guy. And Randy Oviedo, great bass player, great sound uh, and super cool guy. Uh, Tracy G is just a monster at his guitar playing. He's very uh, he's unique. He's very different from from other guitarists. Um, and none of these guys have a big head. And that's what I liked also. Uh, you know, I, I big heads. You can leave those at the back door. Um, you know, we, we, we all know who we are. We're professional and, uh, and we know what we can do, but, but you, you got to realize where your talent comes from. And so that's it. Yeah. You know, that, that's a great attribute to, to, to be motivated by, you know, humility does go a long way. Um, and, and it's always amazing to me when people who are tremendous talents, 
um, have such a humble spirit about them. And that that's one thing that is encouraging to hear as you say that, you know, the whole big head thing, you know, there's, there's a lot of that that we run into and we, it does rub all of us the wrong way, I think in, in many ways. One of the questions we always ask uh, our musicians, the artists that we interview, especially during this time of COVID, where things are different for musicians. But I want to ask that, but I also want to ask in general, um, what is it like being an artist today versus back when you were back when you started in the 80s? Um, what are some of the challenges? I, I know COVID's a challenge, but um, recording-wise, everything-wise, um, what are some of the challenges that you're running into? Uh, not to get too upset at the tyranny. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. Um, I, you know, yeah, it's it's. Uh, how can I explain this? It's 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 you, you, you're desperately wanting to hold on to your freedom. You know, we're in this country because we are free. Uh, Everybody who comes to this country uh, has generally, if they've come from somewhere else, they've generally escaped really something that wasn't as good as what they found in this country. That's been so blessed by God because we have, um, uh, we have uh, been our principles by our founding fathers have been founded on God, you know, and so, and so we were blessed for so long. Well, this country has been taking a kind of a 180 uh, degree turn away from God. And so uh, when, when that happens, you know, the country generally goes downhill from there. But uh, uh, so, yeah, a lot of things have changed since then, uh, but they've been progressing really. Uh, it's, uh, but you know, this year is a little bit different. Sometimes, when, when, when God allows a major uh, a tra- travesty to happen, such as the COVID, the whole COVID thing, and it really messes up a lot of people's lives, uh, they in turn start to get on their knees more. And, uh, and they realize, uh-oh, uh, you know, I'm but dust and ashes. Um, where am I, where's my life going? What's, what's going to happen? I better get right with God, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and do it quick. And so it's been kind of forcing people to reevaluate uh, who actually runs the show, you know, God's in control of everything, but uh, you know, it's been difficult. Yeah. The whole COVID thing has been quite difficult for people to, to, to manage. Um, the suicide rate has been climbing up like crazy. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to provide actually, solutions to to that kind of stuff in my lyrics i've always wanted to do that anyway uh because people do face things and and they they have issues in life and i and i i love them i honestly do love them i love the fans and i really want to see them succeed and whatever they're good at Mm. you know um uh, just not to break the subject too much but all given a talent um by god and so it's just something to appreciate and, and something to fulfill. So, you know, everybody has to search inside of themselves to find out what that is that they're really good at and go for it and yeah. do a great job. So despite everything that's going on now, which is quite different from the 80s or back then or whatever, um, yeah, you just got to make the best of it. Put God first and, uh, and uh, you know, pray for the best. 
Mm. Yeah, I, I'm glad you, you mentioned that about the lyrics, um, because I, I've noticed it clearly in the Gale Force album, listening to it, um, about it attacking issues and struggles and challenges that people face and, and trying to get people to overcome that. And it, it was reminiscent of the Baron Cross days of, of dealing, you know, Baron Cross would always deal with the social issues of the day, uh, you know, racism, uh, abortion, all the different things that were happening. Um, do do yeah. you as a writer, is it something that, um, you know, the best way to ask this is, I mean, do you, do you kind of look at the headlines and see, well, what's the greatest need and let me write a song to fill that void? Or is it more your your passion is just, you're just kind of led there organically? Yeah, I, the latter, I believe, uh, is really what happens. Uh, I, 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 I tend to pray. I ask God, what, what should I write about, you know? Uh, I really do have that kind of relationship with him, and 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 one song that uh, that I ended up writing for this last album is called "Never Say Goodnight," and uh, what I was just talking about uh, about people ending their lives because they don't have any hope, uh, because you know there's always a reason to get back up on your feet. Always, uh, you know, soldiers they know that it's not easy fighting in a war, but they understand that to remain alive, uh, you don't give up. There's always a reason to get back up on your feet, as I said. And even when you think that you feel crushed in this world, um, you know, I, I have suffered uh, some hard times in my life and I don't I don't look for solutions down here. I look higher. And that's where the power is. Uh, whenever the past tries to infringe itself upon my present, you know, I realize that I'm 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 being lied to. OK. And I, I don't let it change my future. No matter what, I never say goodnight. And that's what the song's about. I just I, I just see a need I, I don't know how to put it any better but I, I see a need in this world and I, I I feel led to address it you know that's that's the way it is with uh, with a lot of my lyrics and so I mean and not everything <clears throat> not everything is about a social issue you know I write about love uh, mm -hmm. red line red line is a simple love song yeah uh, and uh, actually it's more like a tragedy kind of like uh, Romeo and Juliet but it's but it's a love song, uh, you know, so it really depends from song to song.
digital downloads, right? We've got all the different ways to access music these days. What do you want to see most as an artist in terms of getting your music out? Do you even care? Or do you say, you know what? I really want people to buy it on vinyl because that's where we're going to get the best sound. Or, hey, you know what? Digital download is fine because more <laughs> people are going to get it that way. Well, what, what's your preferred way of getting the music out to the people? Kind of nice when uh, people want to buy the physical, the physical product, uh, whether it's a CD or you know the T-shirts. Uh, uh, I've got you know T-shirts like this, and uh, you know it's it's kind of nice. It's something you can hold on to. It's something you can uh, touch, you know, and and just just nothing like that when you pull out a CD booklet and you you can see the the photographs and the, the lyrics and all of that stuff. It's 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 just nice. It's more, it's more intimate, more romantic, really, uh, than, uh, you know, today, uh, uh, everything seems to go virtual, and, and it's just less, uh, it's got less personality to it, really, I think, but, I mean, you know, that's, that's okay, it really depends on what the person's needs are, it's not to say it's bad uh, that people like a digital form, format, um, but really, it's, it's really, it really depends on what, uh, everybody uh, what they what they prefer but I, I I like the thing you can touch you know so I really like the CDs yeah and ladies and gentlemen I would recommend everyone who's listening right now to go to galeforceband.com and purchase the item the music or the uh, t-shirts whatever you might want to buy directly from the artist in support of them um, because that's what we need today I believe is to support the artist and in, in, in endeavors of what they're doing said that michael um you have, you have the album of gale force um i'm curious of what the what you think what are some of the plans here in the future i know we already talked covid affects a lot of things touring wise and concerts um mm -hmm. are you thinking of a tour at some point um and not just with gale force but michael drives solo stuff um you know nowadays i know artists are doing two or three things at a time so so tell us what your plans are here in the next year well, yeah, that, that all depends on, on what the powers that be allow us musicians to do. Right now, they've got a noose around our neck and uh, makes it very difficult to go out and tour. 
uh, because already they've stricken fear into the hearts of millions of people all across the world. I've heard of, uh, of bands doing shows and only getting a fraction of the amount of people that they normally get because people are scared out of their minds that they're going to die as soon as they, they, um, they get together with another group of people, you know? And so, uh, they, they don't, they don't bother to tell you the numbers. They just, you know, they just make you think you're going to die. And so that's, um, that's a bummer. Uh, but, uh, I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. I, I, I will try to, to be present as much as possible with the way that I'm allowed to, um, right now it's virtually. And, uh, I mean, this is also a really nice way of talking to people. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and so that, that's great, but, uh, we'll see. I, I, I really enjoy touring. I really enjoy playing concerts, being on the stage, interacting with people, throwing myself into the crowd, uh, you know, doing this all the way down the stage, you know, running from one end down to the other, you know, and slapping everybody's hands. And uh, I just love that kind of stuff. And so, uh, it, it's a relationship with the people that I really like. And so as soon as I'm able to get back on stage, great. Come on. Can folks uh, follow you, connect with you on uh, social media or, or any other ways? Just uh, right on the band page of our website, galeforceband.com. Uh, there's a tab called band actually. And, and right at the bottom of that, you'll find all the social media links and everything. Um, oh, by the way, speaking of things you can touch, let me show you a little gem that I still have. See this? Yes. Oh. I bought this brand new in 19. Uh, actually, this was about 36 years ago that I bought this. Yes. And wow. um, it's my Flying B. It's actually on the back cover of Rock for the King. This one, this very guitar. I remember that. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I, kind of, I kind of, what's that? I was going to say, for our folks who are listening only and only getting audio, tell them what we're looking at. Oh, okay. This is a Flying V. It's a uh, Takamini Flying V uh, acoustic guitar. It's actually acoustic electric. Uh, I wish you guys could have video and see this because it's, it's pretty cool. There are not very many of them. Uh, you know, it, when I bought this, it was, I just, I was very impressed by the sound of it uh, and uh, by the, uh, the tonality of the intonation. It stayed in tune. It was really, it's a really good guitar. I've really banged it up quite a bit and I see that it's a, it's, I, I've got to get it fixed. Any Luthers out there that want to fix my guitar? <laughs> I need to find. I need to find a Luther. Anyway, so that's that's that. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that's that's that. Um, I've got. Uh, oh, this is my my latest. It's a Yamaha. Oh wow! Whoa! Yeah. Kind of see through, kind of a see through kind of deal. Uh, but it really sounds great through a PA system. I mean, this puppy rocks. And so I'm, I, I'm really, this is my latest 
and I really like it too. <laughs> of course, you got my tailor right there. You know, not much to say about Taylor. They're great. You know, that's a fantastic company. So I, I always really like this one. Too. Yeah. Seeing that, it's amazing that instruments like that with that quality can last such a long time. It's that's incredible. Yeah, it's uh, a great guitar. I, I got people that want to trade it for a for a Gibson Flying V. Actually, George Ochoa, he wants to he wants me to trade that to him uh, for a for a Gibson Flying V. And I I want a Gibson Flying V. I don't have one. And so uh, you know, but I, I said no way. I'm not going to trade this one. You know? <laughs> this is my pride and joy. I really like this guitar. So. Yeah, well, that's great. <laughs> It's great to have you on. I appreciate all that you have done and are doing. And, and we're honored that you took the time to be with us tonight. And thank you. We are looking forward to more from you in the future. But ladies and gentlemen, if you have not heard Gale Force yet, you will not be disappointed. Galeforceband.com. Go there. You will love the music. It is power. It is metal. It is, it is just tremendous. And as he says, and the website even says, bringing back the rock that we all enjoy and love which is what wild man and steve show is all about so thank you very much the return the return to real rock right yeah return <laughs> to real yeah. rock absolutely yeah well, i i thank you guys i really appreciate it uh thanks for having me on thank you It was a great time interviewing Michael Drive. 
He has a long-standing career as a vocalist with Baron Cross, as a solo artist, and now with his new band Gale Force. I love the sound and appreciate how he is letting God lead in all he does, which all of us should do the same. Thank you for listening, everybody. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review at wildmanandsteve.com. There you will also be able to find out more about all the projects we have going. We will see you next time.